Thanks for reading. Our seventh tradition states that every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. We will now pass the basket. This is a weekly step meeting. Our format is as follows. The speaker is asked to talk for 25 to 30 minutes on the step of that week, followed by discussion or questions until 7 p.m. You can find these weekly meetings on our YouTube page, the Conscious Contact Speaker Group of Doylestown. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and share. That brings us to the speaker portion of the meeting on this day of January 1st, 2024 in Doylestown. Yeah, that's probably the last time I'm going to get that year right for at least another three months. <laughs> um, <laughs> In Doylestown, PA, at the Monday night, 6 p.m., stay live literature and step group at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Tonight's speaker is Kyle. Uh, yeah. and, they, and they will be sharing their experience on step number three. Uh, please help me welcome Kyle again. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm an alcoholic and an addict. Uh, I'm going to start off by. Uh, Talking a little bit about my past to bring me to what, how I've been able to use my first three steps leading up to step three. Um, growing up, I, I lived in a pretty much churchy family. It was a lot of God, a lot of uh, First Baptist, a lot of if you got all the Ten Commandments. Drinking was the number one thing in my family to do. Was every Sunday we go and they would always have wine and beer afterwards and cookouts and that was just part of my family um growing up made me not want to be like that uh i i resented god i i put devil tattoos on me i i literally uh, went out of my way to rebel against it um then when i was 15 uh I was drinking and I was riding my moped and I got hit by a semi. Um, I was in a coma for two weeks. I lost my memory for almost two years. I had to write down everything down for two years, my short term memory. And I still have nightmares about that. Um, so it basically kept me drinking for a long time, which is not an excuse. But um, the hardest thing was, you know, I thought that was a punishment. That's when I started believing in God, honestly. It was like that I can't believe this happened to me, but I'm glad it did because I, I don't think I would ever believe not. I should have been dead. I should have died that moment. And God left me on this planet for a reason. And that was the first time I decided to stop drinking. And uh, I didn't drink until I was 21 after that. Um, I, I got into the drug life a little bit. Um, so I, I got really into Jesus after that point, and I couldn't really find what really, you know, settled me. Couldn't really like I knew about it. I I, I read the Bible, and it doesn't make sense to me. Like you're just this big book unless I sit down and talk to people out like a textbook. It's just it, nothing really comprehended. So uh, I I just went straight back into drinking and forgot all about you know what is God, like what is my higher power what is my passions i lost everything uh i drank i drank and i basically ruined my life for eight full years uh to the point where i was on my deathbed a couple times which leads me to my favorite thing about the willingness key and the 12 and 12 is that uh, let me look at a second Oh yeah, there it is. Like uh, that after each of us have met his own near fatal encounterment with the juggernaut of self will and has suffered enough to realize that his self will cannot determine his new life going forward. And to me, that stuck out because uh, sitting there uh, eleven times the last year and a half, I've had alcohol poisoning. Um, near death experiences, uh, throwing up blood everywhere. Can't really. No, I'm not going to go into the details, but I was completely lost, and 
I had no idea where to go from there. I still didn't. I didn't even know about AA. I knew about NA. Really didn't know about AA. Um, and I went to a detox program. And at this detox program, I met somebody there that was in AA. And he talked to me about the AA stuff. And he, he gave me a book, my first ever book. And he sat down and he read the first uh, chapter with me. And he's like, I think this is what you have. And I was like, ah, I don't know if I could believe in all that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that ain't nothing. I'm... You, the will of my higher power I, what's that and so I was just like nah I think I'm just going to leave here go back to my job I'm just going to do what I need to do and so uh, I got the opportunity then uh, to come to Pennsylvania I'm originally from Indiana um, the opportunity arose out of the blue like it was a gift from an angel like hey we can send you there you free six months everything's paid for I was like well, vacation, hey. <laughs> so I was like, I was telling everybody, I'm going on vacation to Pennsylvania for six months, getting paid for it, let's go. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let's do this. So I get on the airplane, first time I ride on the airplane, first time I'm basically leaving my state other than on vacation for like a day or two. And I end up in Pennsylvania with just a suitcase of my belongings and had no idea what I was doing. And I suddenly just, it just smacked me in the face. I'm like, I have no idea what to do. Like, what am I doing? And that first day, I ended up uh, calling my first sponsor and asking him to sponsor me. And he picked me up and took me to a meeting. And I was like, they have meetings that, uh, you know, inpatients, but they're like ran by the people in the patients. And it's really not like a meeting outside of there. So I've never really been to one. So I showed up there and we went to a big book reading. And I was like, what is all this? Like, this is like Bible study. I don't know what this is. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I just started, I started just, I just went like, I'm just going to follow. I just followed, followed those suggestions. And so I just kept on going back and going back. And I'd say about three weeks in, I finally did my first step. And I was like, well, yeah, I have a problem. Like, that's why I'm here. And so, and I, I, he started, I started going back through my life and I realized Wow. Every single thing I ever got in trouble for, every single thing in all my relationships, everything in my past, I have scrutinized through my using. And I'm like, wow, that's something. I thought I was just trying to have fun with it. I thought it was because they didn't do it with me or stuff like that. So uh, that's when I, I, he's like, what about step two? You believe in a higher power? And I was like, well... I got Jesus on my arm, and he goes, that's not Jesus on your arm. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right, you're right. He goes, do you, believe, do you believe in a higher power? I was like, I believe something out there has, um, yeah, I do. He goes, explain how. I'm like, oh. there's no way somebody can make the stars, the nature, the air quality, to be able to breathe. I, I can't even tell you the science behind it. So there's got to be something that's in a higher power to create us, a creator. And he goes, there, now you have something you can believe in. I'm like, huh. He goes, the creator, the nature, whatever it wants to be. It could be anything. It could be that chair. And I was like, I'm not picking the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so he's like, okay, well, now you're going to get on your knees. I'm like, why am I getting on my knees? Like, what? He's like, yeah, we're going to pray. And he's like, we're going to do step three. I'm like, what's step three? He goes, you got to give your will away. I'm like, my will? <laughs> like, oh, is this, do I have to start wearing, like, stuff to church? Do I have to go to church every, like, three days a week or something? What's going on? He goes, no, no. You just got to be able to be willing to take any suggestions and use your will, uh, not use your will, and use God's will to persuade your will to help others. And he goes, I go, huh. Is that simple? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, it's simple, but it's very hard to do. I'm like, huh, yeah. He's like, it's going to creep up. Your willingness will always creep up. Like the other day, I was just sitting there, and I was like, man, I really don't want to do nothing. And like, it was yesterday, actually. <laughs> yesterday, I was like, man, I really don't want to do nothing. It's New Year's Eve, and I'm just thinking about all the past New Year's Eves. And I'm like, man, my willingness just tells me that I should just get a burger and, and sit here and watch football and think about my past life. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's telling me I'm like ah 
So I texted Brian in the back of that day, and I was like, what you doing tonight? And so I ended up going to an AA party and talking a period of it and, and spreading a little hope, and I felt better than I ever did the whole week, and it's because I was helping somebody. And that's when I, I, just, I just, every single day I get the realization that if I keep using my will and I keep giving up my willingness to a higher power, and instead of, you know, having no willingness and stepping back and being shut down on the inside and doing everything in my way, my way only, self-conceited, ah, this is me, and that I'm not going to get anywhere in life. It's going to lead me right back to the same path, the same spiral down, right back to the same things. I'm going to end up back in prison, jails, institutions, or death. So step three is a really big one on me. Every single day I uh, say uh, the serenity prayer. Every morning, uh, I do my morning, uh, page 86, 87, 88. I read that every morning, and I do my daily uh, review. Um, I pray, and I do. I have my own set prayers to the side, and I do those every lunch and every morning and at nighttime. Uh, I do a 10-step. I do it on, on my phone on that uh, app thingy that I was given <laughs> and I still do one in my, I do one in my head and on a piece of paper too because I don't like phones um, I'm kind of old school that way I guess uh, other than that I just trying to keep working this third step and that's what's making me keep going on thank you Please limit your sharing to, well, we don't care about time. Please keep your shares related to the step. If you feel like drinking or if you've had a drink today, please see me or speak to someone after the meeting. We ask that you please refrain from the use of profanity. We are in a church and on a spiritual journey. Now the room is open to you. Dun, dun. Oh, man.